Hi everyone, not the best uh, internet connection here, but we'll do what we can. Uh, basically, you know, let's see if this gets a better picture here, not much better. <laughs> oh well. Um, but we're uh, streaming live to answer questions. I've been trying to use the Zoom. For some reason, we've had problems with the different folks using that. So I want to answer some questions that um, different viewers, different uh, Field Rep 101 members have about uh, getting started in field inspections and stuff. Of course, one of the main ones that we always uh, get is, you know, how do you get started? Uh, what is it take? Um, you know, what training do you need? Uh, where do you get the assignments? So these are just the things that are commonly asked. Um, and really, like, uh, for me, when I got started, there was just nothing out there. I mean, I had to like dig through everything. So since then, of course, um, besides uh, my own training stuff, I got connected uh, early on with Richard Law of Sophie, um, and he has a directory that uh, you know we offer um, at his just to the scout that uh, you know basically because he and I have worked together for a number of years. Plus, um, I find that like along with having the directory. You really need the training. You really need to have an understanding of what it is to do the field inspections, how to basically get the work, uh, how to approach agencies, how to uh, write the reports themselves, uh, what are the best ways to talk to the different contacts and stuff like that when you need to go on site. So with all that said, um, yeah, that's one of the ways that I would say to do it is besides the training we offer is to just get a copy of that directory. Um, even if you don't go through us to get it, definitely get it um, just simply because that's where you'll get the list of agencies to contact. Um, these are reputable companies that uh, for the most part pay well. Some are still a little bit on the lower end and stuff like that, but definitely you know, with the industry consolidation and different things that's happened over the years, the field inspection companies generally can't afford to lose good inspectors. Which comes to the next um, thing. If you develop a reputation for showing up on time, getting the work done, handling clients, handling uh, contacts well, uh, being professional, not wearing like ratty jeans uh, when you go to a office building um, that you're inspecting or uh, you know, different times, uh, not uh, you know, like in your email, not having a, um, a email address of uh, you know, um, doggy lover, you know, six two seven at yahoo.com, you know, like so having some of these key things and stuff like that uh, in place will make it where you get more work because over the years I've definitely been in situations where uh, I inspected the same properties over and over again because the agencies know what kind of work I do. They know I get it done on time. Um, they know I know how to speak to these professional property managers and the owners. Um, you know, heaven forbid you should show up at a pro you know, talk with an owner and not know how to present yourself. Uh, in different cases, you know, not only will the agency hear about it, but you know, it's basically the owner's going to contact the loan agency, um, and they're going to complain, like, "Who is this guy?" You know, like, you know, how these are the kind of people you send out when you know I, I have, you know, millions of dollars uh, of business with you and stuff. So they really have an expectation that you're going to show up, be professional. Um, know how to present yourself. Okay, with all that said, um, then the other element is just having the basics down. So the things we teach with the training is that you want to have some basics such as, you know, the obvious one's digital camera. The other ones are, you know, things like having a clipboard. Even though you probably don't need it different times, you can maybe even like memorize this up or put the information in a smartphone or something like that. But, um, Having a clipboard just gives you, again, that professional appearance. It's the expectation of folks. Um, maybe in another few years, clipboards and, and paper, for that matter, will be a thing of the past. But I started in 2007 or so, and that's still just basically what people expect. I mean, that's 
you know, it, it's the same as like when you go to a doctor's office, you expect them to be in a lab coat. Um, often you expect them to have a stethoscope, you know, even if like they're an eye doctor, right, where they're probably not likely to listen to your heartbeat and stuff. So it's just expectations. Um, so the training, the equipment, uh, having a vehicle was pretty important. Um, and that's one of the things that like I've talked about before where you can go to different cities. In fact, sometimes like cities like San Francisco or New York, it can be a hindrance. You know, you may actually rather not have a vehicle, but the thing is though, unless you're going to um, be able to kind of jump on the, you know, a subway or metro to all the buildings. And in fact, in San Francisco, there's no way because there's parts of the city that just are not un not reachable by metro, um, at least not within a uh, reasonable walking distance and stuff. So you'll still need a car to get a lot to a lot of different properties. 80% of the properties you'll be inspecting, even as a commercial field inspector, will be apartment buildings. That being said, um, they're in residential areas, which may or may not have a bus, may or may not have a, um, a metro or line or something like that. So this is why like transportation is still critical for your job. Um, other than that, uh, if you are driving a car, if, if it's a hot day like this and stuff, you'll want to have things like water and a snack because sometimes you're just going to be dehydrated and other times your blood sugar is going to run low. And these are just kind of some little things, you know, uh, having a pen should be a, um, a given and not even, we don't even need to say that, but um, it's, you know, I, if anything, I would have a couple of pens and a couple of batteries actually for the camera, you know, spare batteries char that are charged, ready to go, because I've been on different uh, inspections where in the middle of it, that all of a sudden uh, the battery ran, ran out and luckily because I had a charged one, I can quickly swap it. Um, what else? Besides that, the inspection forms is really good to print out. Um, maybe some other background for the property, like uh, the map itself uh, is another good thing to have. Different times that help to be able to kind of visualize uh, the locations, even though that I, on my smartphone, which that's the next thing we'll talk about, um, I may have the route um, you know, set in my calendar. So then when um, the appointment came up on my smartphone, I can quick, just click the location and the uh, GPS will take over for getting to the location. So speaking of which, um, years ago, uh, having a cell phone was basics and stuff. Now I'd say having a smartphone is pretty much the thing to have. You know, uh, I, my personal recommendation would be like a Samsung. I have no vested interest in them. Uh, or an iPhone, you know, like if that's your an Apple kind of person and stuff. Um, I'm actually streaming this on an iPad. And um, having the smartphone really Besides, you know, be able to kind of talk with folks, um, you know, either the property manager if things are running late or something's come up, um, when the owners talking with the field inspection agency different times to let them know what's going on, or just other times, you know, like kind of just again having your appointments uh, pop up on your calendar, having the ability to connect with, uh, you know just your, possibly your email sometimes and stuff like that, um, because sometimes you may just want to get a few other appointments set or some kind of communication while you're on the road and stuff. So those are basically the, the key things to have. Um, and with a lot of these things in place, um, the things that you still, there's, there's really is no substitute for learning, even though I advocate, you know, doing our training and stuff with Fieldwork 101, you won't have anything that really substitutes doing the actual inspections. The things that we do help you do is to, you know, basically have some scripts for, and rehearse, you know, what to say um, between your email communications, your phone calls when you're setting appointments, um, and then, you know, just to get a little bit of taste of the mindset. So we actually have you do exercises where you go and inspect the property, check it out and all that kind of stuff. So these are just, again, some of the basics, some of the key things to get started. Um, yeah, I've uh, started some other folks in the um, a field, field Rep 101 basic training. Beyond that, what I've learned is that online training is great, ebooks and you know stuff to read, whatever. Um, and then doing the inspections is is the um, other things, as we said, is even more important than everything else. But in between that, it helps to have 
folks to hold us accountable. Has it's a great resource to have um, way to ask questions. So between email, we also have a private insiders uh, group for Field Rep 101 members. Um, these are for folks who have joined us on the live workshop um, and also who have, were part of the early pilot programs and we um, taught this online and stuff. So if you want access to that, um, I'll provide some links uh, for this. And uh, yeah, definitely let me know how I can help you get started. Uh, these are just definitely some of the main things we wanted to cover. I'm gonna do a quick check to see if there's any questions. Um, hold on a second, let me have a quick look, see if 